Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back to the Melanated Muslim Podcast. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about some of the lifestyle changes that I have made thus far when it comes to my journey in Islam and stuff like that. So some people, when they convert, they don't make these lifestyle changes right away. They take it slowly. So everybody's journey is different, of course, like nobody's journey is the same. Nobody's journey is the same. And I feel like it's important to note that. So with my journey, these are the changes that I made like almost instantly after I did my Shahada, which is the Shahada is your um, like convert ceremony kind of that you have that you declare that you're Muslim. So right after I did my Shahada, I knew that I wanted to wear the hijab. Wearing the hijab was something that I knew that I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to do it right away. Or um, like as soon as I like did my shahada, I was like, I don't know if I want to do it. Like wait a year, see how I am in my faith. But towards like coming towards my shahada, I knew that it was something that I wanted to do as soon as I converted to Islam. Now I know a lot of people ask me who are very like not educated on Islam and basically what the media portrays is what they know. So a lot of people ask me if the hijab is forced and why are you wearing that like a lot of people don't know and they, they're like asking questions that are stereotypical and you know they don't educate themselves so I have to tell them like no it's not forced it's something that we choose to wear it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all women to do because it's mentioned in the Quran in two separate in two verses that I have in verse 2431 and verse 3359 and basically Allah is saying that he wants women to cover themselves with a veil, which is like the um which is the hijab, cover their breast, because that's what the hijab is meant to do to cover your chest and your neck and so forth. So that's what he wanted the women to do. And it's mentioned in the Quran. And a lot of people don't know that it's mentioned in the Quran, and that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for women. So a lot of people don't know that. So they see as force but god in my opinion gives us all free will right because it's recommended that we pray five times a day but not everybody prays five times a day why because they have the choice on whether they want to or not so it's just something like that is said and um what allah wants us to do in the quran and some women follow that and some women don't so for me i knew that i wanted to do it as soon as i did my shahada and it's so funny, like some of the questions that I have been getting about me wearing the hijab, like some people ask me if I do my hair, um, how is my hair routine? So I still do my hair. I still buy hair products and stuff like that. Like I even take more care of my hair now because it's covered, you know, most of the day. So you want to make sure it's moisturized and all that stuff. So I do do that. And of course, there has been some stereotypes because a lot of people have asked me if it's forced because what they see on the media and stuff like that. So I have to like I tell people like, no, I'm not forced to wear it. It's something that I wanted to do. So that has been a lifestyle change. And like since I started to wear the hijab, I didn't feel different. Like it just felt right for me to do. I like put on the hijab. And it just felt right. I didn't be like, oh, this is weird. This is nothing. Like, I looked up some tutorials on how to, like, basically tie it. My f- In the beginning, like, the way I tied my hijab was so bad. But I was, like, literally just learning compared to how I tie it today. I'm not, like, still not the best. I'm still learning different styles. Um, but it just felt right. It didn't feel like I was, like, an imposter to this. It just felt like something I should do. The next change that I made is only eating halal food. So before I would, well, let me explain what halal food is. So halal food is food that you get from the halal market that has been killed. And when they kill it, it is facing towards Mecca and there's a prayer. And they kill the animal by slitting its throat and then and instantly, like, I don't want to go into gory details, but like the way that they kill it is like a certain way the animal can't eat certain things. Um, another stuff that is um, with halal, there is 
we don't eat pork like it's very similar to like kosher what the what people can eat who are jews it's very similar so that's what halal but before i did my shahada before i did my shahada i would go to the halal store and buy halal meats but when i would eat out and stuff like that i wouldn't get halal meat and stuff like that and sometimes um i would go to the grocery store and pick up some meat that's not halal but like as soon as i did my shahada I'm like, you know what? I want to be strictly halal. So I let all the meat that I had in my fridge that wasn't halal, I let that finish out because I was like, I'm not throwing this out. Like I spent money on this meat. So once that finished, I switched strictly to halal and stuff like that. So now when I go to restaurants, we are permissible to eat seafood. That seafood doesn't have to be like blessed or something because you're literally just catching it from the sea. So um, I can eat seafood and most likely eat like vegetarian style foods. So those are the things that I do and going to eating halal was not hard for me like in the Caribbean we love our pigtail we love some stew pork but like for me to like stop eating bacon and all stuff it wasn't like a big change for me like I don't miss it it's not like oh my goodness I can't have it like you know like during some um, holidays you have a roasted ham or salted ham or split pea soup with pigtail and stuff like that like it's not food that I'm gonna miss like I don't miss it since I stopped eating pork and stuff like that and I wasn't even like a big pork eater like before then most of the times when I would have pork is during the holiday season and even then I still didn't eat as much like the most pork I probably ate was like bacon if I got like a sandwich and there's bacon in it I wouldn't be like oh hold the bacon I would eat the bacon but um, it wasn't something that I did all the time. Oh, another thing that goes with halal foods is no more gelatin. And like since becoming Muslim, I'm surprised about how much gelatin is in everything. Like medications that have gelatin, um, like food products that you don't think that has gelatin in it, that has gelatin in it. And you're like, excuse me. So it's just like so crazy. And then um, somebody had gave me an told me about an app let me see if I can find it the app is called scan halal and you can scan different stuff to know if it's halal or not I don't know how like reliable and like who created the app and stuff like that so I don't like if you download it and you be like oh I know this is this um isn't halal and it says that it's halal like I didn't create the app it's just like a resource that was given to me so that was pretty cool that they have an app so you can make sure what you're eating and what you're getting is halal because a lot of stuff has gelatin in it that you don't think of like I was watching like if you watch the greatest British bake show and you see like the baking stuff and they have to put like gelatin and stuff and I'm like all oh, this has gelatin in it like I wouldn't think that mousse like you know chocolate mousse has gelatin in it like it's so crazy and I'm like I love chocolate now I can't have certain chocolates because some of it may have gelatin in it which is crazy another thing that lifestyle change that I did is not drinking anymore and this may be a big surprise to the caribbean community especially to grenadians because out of all the caribbean islands nobody drinks like grenadians which is like kind of sad in a way but grenadians love their rum you know we have one of the strongest rums in the caribbean and i would tell people and i would like before i would like force my friends to try i'm like try it and they would like start coughing and blah 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 but um alcohol is forbidden in islam because they want to protect you and alcohol can lead to addictions and certain stuff like that you know alcoholism and that's a big thing in the caribbean that we don't really talk about we see people who drink a lot and really don't really say anything we just watch them it's just like normal you go to grenada you see people it's like nine o'clock in the morning and a drunk person is passed out in front of a shop those are normal things but if you really think about it it's like kind of sad so i just like as soon as i did my shahada i was like i'm no longer drinking like I'm just not I like made a decision and honestly I don't miss alcohol I thought I would like especially because I love like to drink wine when I come home and all that stuff and I don't really miss it and I wasn't I wouldn't say like I would drink but I wasn't like a big big time drinker like it wasn't that I had to have a drink every day or I went out every weekend drinking you know when I didn't have wine in the house there was like goes weeks or months without me having wine until I get another bottle so it wasn't something that I like did regularly for me to be like, oh my God, it's such a big change. But um, yeah, like 
I don't really drink. My mom is not a big drinker either. She most like she just collects liquor and has it around. And when somebody says they want to drink it, she tells them no. So it's just like she's just collecting them at this point. <laughs> but um, I stopped drinking and I don't miss it. Um, you know, when I told people that I was no longer drinking, they're like, what? You're no longer drinking? I can never become Muslim. I don't think I could give up drinking. I love my wine. I love this. I love that. And I'm just like, well, good for you. Like, that's probably why you shouldn't be Muslim or something like that. And again, not all Muslims follow these rules, even though it's said in the Quran. Again, God gave you free will so it's up to the person on what part like if they want to follow this what god has built for us the next thing that is forbidden in the quran is gambling which is like people who do lottery tickets and go to the casino um gambling is something i barely did i feel like i probably only bought like five lottery tickets in my whole life and like probably like 10 scratch offs and that's all I did and I lost and I was like I don't like this and I went to the casino once in my lifetime and I lost three dollars and I was like this is it for me that's that no more of that so gambling giving that up is wasn't something that made me sad or like oh my god I can't do scratch offs or something and you know again some Muslims do this while some don't another thing that I had that's going to be a lifestyle change is like holidays that I can't celebrate anymore. Um, Before doing my Shahada, Christmas is one of my favorite holidays. And it was my favorite holidays, not really to celebrate Jesus, peace be upon him. It was more so because um, it was more so because I like spending time with my family. And I love the Christmas music that comes out around the time and like holiday music. I love Christmas music and stuff like that. And I would like spend time with my family and we have our own genre of Christmas music in the Caribbean called Parang. So I would enjoy that because like Grenadian Parang is like if you live in a small town and you steal, the local villagers will create a song and call you out for stealing. So like it's like a funny song and they make it funny and they call people out. So I would like like it. It's like just fun. And the Parang music and the style has, um, you know, Caribbean flair and a lot of Spanish styles in it too. So that is why I enjoyed it and being spending time around my family. So I no longer celebrate Christmas and I'll no longer celebrate Easter. Easter wasn't as big of a holiday for me. Like usually for Easter, um, back like in college, it was it became a big thing because um, I would invite people from my college to come over to my house since I didn't live too far from campus and they would come over and eat food. But that was about it. So now I don't have those um like Christmas and stuff like that and like Christmas is coming up and I honestly thought I would be like kind of sad that I'm not celebrating Christmas but I honestly don't feel no type of way because Christmas to me is more about spending time with your family and eating good food. It's not about Santa Claus or something like that and for me it wasn't really it didn't I didn't have like a big connection to like oh it's Jesus birthday cuz I always knew that he may not have been born this day. And my grandpa was of the religion of Yahweh, and he didn't celebrate Christmas. So I grew up around people who didn't celebrate Christmas because they were like, we don't know if he was born this day and stuff like that. And yeah, another lifestyle change that came about is social media. So I had a YouTube channel that was, I wasn't very consistent. I would say it's like, okay, it did okay. It wasn't like big YouTube channel or something. It was something like small and new, like a dot in this like YouTube community. And my Instagram pictures, I hid all of them and I put a lot of them on private because I didn't have a hijab on in those videos. And at first I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna feel so sad if I meet with the imam and he tells me I have to get rid of these. So I met with the imam and he said, you know, I would recommend you get rid of them because now you wear a hijab and you don't want nobody to use it against you and blah, blah, blah. So I went home right after that and I hid all my photos and I put all my videos on private and I thought I would feel some type of way but I didn't like I was like oh this video did so well it has this many views like I was thinking that at first but I was like I don't really 
me feel bad because you know what? I could redo these videos and make them so much better than they were before and make them so much greater. And I have learned so much since then. I know how to create different things now. I've learned so much since my YouTube things. So I basically get to redo my whole YouTube channel. And a lot of people don't have the opportunity to do that. And I do. So I look at it as an opportunity to make the sum of the same videos, but make them with better content and come with more information. And before I had a video that talked about African ethnic groups that can be found in the Caribbean, I had it as in two parts, but I just released it as in um, one part and I added even some more ethnic groups to there. So that was really cool. And I made it much better, in my opinion, than the first one. So I'm so happy that that's out there and I can't wait to redo some of the other ones. But, you know, it's going to take some time because I'm a busy woman. <laughs> Another thing that change is... I pray five times a day. Now, for me, praying was something that I didn't do often before. Like, I would find myself to remember to pray. I was more of a person who, like, at night, I would write, like, stuff down. Or guess, like, write prayers. I'd be like, dear God. And I would do that. I'm more of, like, a written person than I am spoken. Like, if I was to do this podcast and I was to write it out, it will be way better than me speaking it. So, like, if I was to do this episode and write out one of what I wanted to say and come to you guys, it would be way better than just me freestyling it like how I'm doing now. So, praying five times a day, you know, it is prayers already, like, telling you what to say and what to do. But this time, like, the prayers, they're in Arabic. So, like, Quranic Arabic. So, I had to learn how to say them again. And there's different movements they have to do. You have to know when to put your hands up, when to put your hands on your, like, you have your hands folded on your chest, then you bend down and put your hands on your knees, then you come back up and you have your hands on your side, then you raise your hands again, then you go down to the ground, you put your forehead on the ground, then you sit up, and then you say something, then you put your forehead back on the ground, and then you go up and do the same thing, so it's like a lot of stuff, and each step has a different phrase that you say in Arabic, and I'm doing that five times a day, so that has been like a shift, and it's something that like I haven't gotten used to it yet, I feel like I feel more like sluggish on doing them. It's like the the early morning one, which is Fajr. It's like at five or six o'clock in the morning and you're like so tired and you're hearing your thing go off and you like have to get up to do your prayer and you have to do that. And um, there's this whole process called would do. We have to watch certain parts of your body. I will get into more of that um, probably in the next episode, what you have to do. So doing your prayers five times a day has been a big change. And, like, you incorporate prayer into everything that you do because literally I'm at work and it's I get a notification that it's prayer time. So at work, um, alhamdulillah, I'm so thankful that I have a job that allows me to use have prayer time. So I, like, get the notification, go to the bathroom if I need to, do what do, and pray. So, like, nothing of the day is bothering me because I'm literally stopping the moment going to pray talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know you do you can do your structure prayers but you also talk to God as well and you could do that so I feel like you know I'm getting better at praying and knowing what to like say and things like that when it comes to prayer and stuff something that I didn't have before I don't know if that makes sense because I barely prayed before but now I have the opportunity to pray five times a day and I find myself sometimes looking forward to the prayers, alhamdulillah, and um, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's prayer time. Yeah, let me go run and pray, and it, like, made me so happy, and there's a few times during prayer time where I started to cry because of, like, the connection that I have. SubhanAllah, it's, like, such a beautiful thing, and I, like, if you would have told me that, oh, Brittany, you're going to be Muslim, and you're going to pray five times a day, like, five years ago, I would have been like, absolutely not, like, I'm not doing that, and guess what? I'm doing it. So that has been nice. And most of all, importantly, what the last or like the biggest lifestyle change is my mindset. Like in Islam, there's a certain like humbleness, truthfulness, philosophy, like metaphor. Like I'm a metaphor person and I feel like a lot of Islam is like metaphors and like deep meaning. Like I love things that have deep meaning deep connection like related to your purpose your relationship with god and all this stuff and i feel like islam is that that's how i feel and with that like after learning more about islam and like how 
Muslims and how you're supposed to view the word, um, the world. Also, like how the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi wasalam, how he viewed things and the humbleness that came with it all and like how you look at things. And even like rewatching the movie Bilal and seeing how he handled things and why he was an important person during this time where the Quran was revealed and him being one of the first people to call the call to prayer, a.k.a. the Adan. So just like looking at that and the philosophy, do you want to say, and the preaching and like what they're saying and the meaning and how it like makes you rethink things and it's in a logical way. It like all makes sense. That has been one of the biggest things for me. Like I see Islam and everything. I'm like, oh, that relates to this. This relates to that. Oh, Islam said this. Islam prepared you for this. Like, it makes it literally a part of everything you do, especially when you see another Muslim, right? The first thing you say, like if you go to a halal store and another person looks at you and you look at them, you go, Assalamu alaikum wa matalahi rabba kattu. And they be like, wa alaikum salam wa matalahi rabba kattu. You're already showing your Islam, you know? I wear a hijab. I'm showing the world that I'm Muslim. It's like my presence. I'm showing people my faith already. And it makes me kind of proud to show it, you know, like I'm Muslim, you know, another Muslim will see me like another Muslim man or Muslim woman can say, assalamu alaikum. If they need help, they can come up to me because we're from the same umrah, the same community, ummah. We're from the same community and stuff like that. So that has been the biggest mindset change is like my mindset changing. And also I want to say me healing in other aspects of my life during the same time that I was discovering Islam it like coincided together and I feel like Islam helped me find the peace me healing me finding Islam me like reevaluating who I am and stuff and like going back to what my core purpose is right what is my purpose on earth what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for us to do what is the main pillars that we're supposed to follow what are the most important things of Islam, right? Now, me as a human, what is my cure? Does that correlate to this religion that I'm in? If not, how do I correlate it to that, right? But also going back to who am I as Brittany outside of everything else? What is my purpose in life? And how can I incorporate Islam into that and stuff like that? I don't know if that makes sense, but it was like me looking at myself, me... Figuring out who I am while adding Islam into it, me being proud to stand in who I am as a woman, who I am as a Grenadian woman, who I am as a woman with her master's in public health, who I am as a woman with her bachelor's in arts, who I am as a woman from New York, you know, all of that, who I am as a black woman, I don't know if I said that, but reevaluating my purpose, remembering who I am in my core essence, um, Relating my faith to who I am and my purpose. And remembering that I am healed. Islam has brought peace into my life. And I, being that I can now stand proudly and truthfully in who I am. And I build a strong foundation by me healing. Even before I found Islam, I started my healing journey, right? But Islam helped fill the pieces like my foundation is strong so even if things come and try to knock the house that I'm building my foundation is strong because I have Islam plus the healing that I did within myself so a lot of stuff can come my way but when I go back to my foundation and my core I know who I am I have no idea if that makes sense like I said I'm a person that um better writing it and then saying it but my mindset has changed. I see world differently, like the world differently. Um, I like before, because I'm a public health major, I see public health in everything. Now I see public health in Islam and everything. Like that's just how I am now. And I'm like, when I see a problem, I'm like, well, you know, this is how Islam says to handle it. Because the way that Islam wants you to handle it is the way that's best for you and makes you more at peace. But then you hold on to negative energy. And that's what we want in life. You want to be at peace. We don't want, there's going to be times where we're not going to be at peace. But the main thing that we go back to is being at peace and having a strong connection with God at the end of the day. 
So hopefully that made sense of what my mindset is. Maybe I'll do a whole episode about my mindset change. But these are some of the lifestyle changes that I have made so far when it comes to me being a Muslim woman now. And I'm so happy that I made these changes, subhanAllah. Um, they came easy. They weren't hard for me. I love subhanAllah what Allah made the path for me. And I'm happy to be here. So thank y'all for listening and stay tuned to the next one. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.